Hi guys, this is Crafty Mom. Today we are going to do a makeup tutorial using the Beetlejuice palette. Um, I got this palette from Hot Topic. Um, we're going to also discuss it at the end of this on what I thought and how easy it was to use. Um, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to moisturize my face using um, this moisturizer. It's an anti-aging cream. Then I'm going to take this ROC um, anti-wrinkle cream that's supposed to help fill in any deep wrinkles that you may have. I'm just kind of testing this one out. Um, I don't have too many deep wrinkles, but it has, it does give me a flatter, more clear complexion to work with. Okay, and now I'm using the Porefessional Primer. Um, I like this primer because it's, it's very smooth and it just smooths out your skin tone and it just it feels really good going on the skin and it gives a good base for your foundation to go smoothly all over your face. Now I'm using the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. I'm not exactly sure what shade because I got this um, in but this was, came to me in an Ipsy bag. Um, but as you're going to see in a second, um, it's, I feel it's just a sh tad too dark for my skin tone. Um, or a tad too yellow maybe? I mean, it, it just doesn't look like it blends in very as, as well as it should. Um, I do like the CC cream. I do feel like it gives you pretty good coverage. It's kind of, and and it's um, a fairly light product, so I do like this. It's just, I think this one was a bit the wrong shade for me. So I'm just, today I'm just trying to use up what product I have left in the tube. There wasn't much left. And I'm using just a, my Jessup Kabuki brush, as always, to blend in my foundation. And then I use my Beauty Blender just to kind of dab off any extra that might be on there. Um, I feel like that's the best way to do it, just kind of blend out any um, streaks that the brush might leave. So now we're gonna zoom in so that you can see me do my eye look. Um, again, not a very flattering. And as you can really see, it's definitely not the right shade for me, that CC cream. Um, but we will make do with it. Okay, so now we're going to take this um, flat, um, flat brush and go into this peach color corrector from Ulta and put that underneath my eyes to kind of get rid of my um, under eye darkness. Um, I don't have too much under eye, like my under eyes don't look too dark today, so we'll just put a little. And then we'll blend it out with a Jessup Small Kabuki brush and with my um, beauty blender, or my beauty sponge. Now I'm going to take some of my banana powder and just kind of set underneath my eyes, um, set that concealer just so that it helps to kind of alleviate the darkness under there. And then we'll, we're, we'll apply this with my beauty sponge and then we'll kind of blend it out and buff it in with the small kabuki brush from Jessup.
Using the Benefit Boing Concealer, I'm going to prime my eyes. And using that same flat concealer brush, I'll just take a little bit of this um, concealer from Benefit and put it on my eyelids to prepare them for the um, eyeshadow. Doesn't take a whole lot, although it does look like I have quite a bit on my eyes. It doesn't really take a whole lot. And I will blend that out with um, the Jessup Kabuki brush, the small Kabuki brush again. Using the Winky Lux um, Diamond Powder in medium, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna go over that concealer with the Jessup Small Kabuki brush and just set that concealer in place. And this also gives a smoother base for the eyeshadows to adhere to. It's just to make, and it's also to make it so that um, that concealer doesn't wrinkle. I have kind of wrinkly eyelids anyway, um, and so I don't really want it to crease or anything. So. So taking the e.l.f. Um, Prime and Set Powder, and this is in Translucent, and a Coastal Scents Powder Brush, I'm just going to go in and set that foundation. Um, it, I kind of noticed it was kind of getting a little dewy on me, so it needed to be set as quickly as possible. I'm just putting this powder all over my face. I like this powder because, um, first of all, you don't have to skin match. It's translucent, so it's perfect for anybody and second of all it goes with pretty much any foundation that I want to wear it looks beautiful with any of it so it's definitely a gets a thumbs up for me Okay, now we're gonna go on to my brows and I'm using the Salon Perfect Powders, um, which I have used in a couple of other videos. I really like this. I use the medium brown shade and just a eyebrow uh, brush. I believe this eyebrow brush actually came with the, um, the powders. Um, again, I am not perfect at doing my brows, so if you have any suggestions on how to do it better, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'm always up for learning new techniques, um, but I think I've done a pretty good job so far. I mean, they don't look terrible, um, but I'm always up for learning, so... I fill them in with the powder and then I just brush through with the little spoolie brush just to get all of the powder blended and to make sure that it all looks evenly distributed. Um, again, I'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to be done, but that's how it looks natural to me. So. Okay, and now we're gonna go into the Beetlejuice palette. It's called the Handbook for the Recently Deceased. It's got some beautiful colors in here. Um, I think we're just going to, I, I believe I was going to do a green look today, so we're gonna use the greens in this palette. The brush I'm going to use is a pointed brush from um, Coastal Scents, and we're going to go into the color Juno at the top. It's kind of a champagne color, and I believe I was going to put that in the crease. Just 
kind of blending it um, into the crease. Now remember, I go just slightly above my crease. And as you can tell, this has a little bit of a shimmer to it, but there's not too many mattes in this palette, which is kind of a drawback. Um, most of it is pretty shimmery. And we are switching brushes to a, another um, pointed brush from Coastal Scents. And we are going into the color called Bio Exorcism, or Bio Exorcist, excuse me. Um, it's kind of a blue green, a deep blue green. And we're going to put that in the outer corner just to kind of give us some depth to our look today. And we're going to blend that just a little bit into our crease. Just like that. Now I'm going to get a clean blending brush, I believe. Yep, just the one from Sedona Lace. I'm just gonna buff that out just a bit. Now one thing I did notice from using these shadows is some of the darker colors, like this Bio Exorcist, did have a lot of fallout. Um, I don't know if you can see the green underneath my eye, but it did kinda it had a lot of powder and I even tapped it off quite a bit so and they blend out almost to nothing I mean there is still a little color but it blended far more than I wanted it to and now we're going into strange and unusual which is a black um, it's one of the few mattes that was in this palette which would have made a very weird transition shade. And we're going back in with that Bio Exorcist color and going the rest of the crease. Um, and now I'm just using a fluffy blending brush to kind of blend it the rest of the way through the crease to kind of give it a smoky, I have a smoky look. I do like the Bio Exorcist better with the, the black at the end, edge. Now we're going into Beetlegeist, which is a kind of a fluorescent green. Um, I actually really like this color in the palette. Um, it took a lot of work to get it to show up on the eye. I think if I would have put a concealer down first, like a maybe a white base, it would have shown up more vibrant. But I still kind of, I, I do like how it ended up looking. I do like the final result. It is a very pretty color. Oh, and I'm using a Coastal Scents um, eyeshadow brush. And now I'm going back with that blending brush and going into the, it is called Dante's Inferno. It's kind of an orangey color. I'm going to blend out the edges a little bit. I um, thought it would look kind of pretty and it did. It kind of gave it a little bit of a smoky, or not a smoky, a uh, different look. I think it was a good choice to do. It didn't look as muddy as it did when I first started. And then I go back in, or I go into Lydia, which is a deeper, almost a terracotta shade, and do that on the outer, outer V, just on the outer edge, to kind of deepen up that um, Dante's Inferno color. As you can tell, I was kind of approving of this eyeshadow look. And I took the small packing brush from Luxie and went into Afterlife, which is a bright white. 
And of course it is not as pigmented as I had hoped it would be. I wanted it for the inner corner. I mean, it, it looks okay, but it wasn't as vibrant as I thought it was going to be. It took a lot of work to build it up to the sh to where I wanted it to be. So going back in with that Sedona lace and blending out all of the edges. That's Sedona lace blending brush. And going back in with that packing brush that has that um, beetle juice on it, beetle guys. And going back into Beetle Geiss, um, and just kind of, because I blended it out, I noticed, so it wasn't as vibrant, so putting that back on to the eyelid. Then going in with just a flat brush, and going into the Bio Exorcist and smudging that along the lower lash line, just on the outer corner. And then going into Beetle Geist and smudging that into the center. And underneath the Bio Exorcist just a little bit. And then going into the afterlife for the inner corner. Or just a highlight shade. And I'm using some of the afterlife just to kind of smudge out the lash line. Didn't quite do what I wanted it to, but yeah. Taking the Pixie um, eyeliner and just kind of going along the upper lash line. brush or my pencil really needs to be sharpened so it's kind of dragging a little bit more than I it usually does usually this is very creamy um, but today it's kind of tugging a little bit a minute to sharpen it a little bit and now doing the lower lash line. Brushing away all of the green that I found from the fallout. Going in with one of my mascaras that I love recently, it's the Too Faced um, Better Than Sex. <clears throat> I'm putting a coat of mascara on, trying to lift it up so I can get to the lashes.
I put on um, probably a good couple of coats on my lashes of mascara um, just because I am a mascara queen. I love lots of mascara. So I did upper and lower lash lines and now I'm going in with this um, Artist Couture highlight and the flat brush and I'm going to add this in the inner corner for um, just a pop of sparkle there because that white didn't quite do what I wanted it to so I thought maybe the Artist Couture highlight would do what I wanted it what I wanted the white, what I had hoped the white would do. And now I will take the time to um, do the other eye off camera and we will be back shortly. Okay, we are done with both eyes and we have false lashes on. So we are moving on to bronzer. And I'm using the Tandrar bronzer from Clean Color. <clears throat> if you watched my Shop Miss A haul, you probably saw this. This is the shimmery one. I also have the matte one, but I thought I wanted to use a little bit of the shimmery stuff today. And the brush I'm using is the Coastal Scent Small Contouring Brush. Perfect for getting in that little groove right there and putting the bronzer right where you want it to be. And now we're using the Ciate London Glow 2, uh, I'm not sure what it's called exactly, um, but it's the highlighter and I think it's in Moon Dust is the, one I, the shade I have. And I'm using this highlighting brush just to add a little bit to my cheeks. It's a very beautiful highlight. Kind of intense if you could tell by my reaction. going in with the Tarte um, Amazonian Clay Blush. Um, this one, I'm not sure what shade it's in, but it is a kind of a peachy blush. And I'm using that same contouring brush that I used before from Coastal Scents. It's a really beautiful blush. It's not typically the color I would go for. It's a little more pink than I like, but I do like this one. Going in with the Tarte Setting Powder. I don't know if you can actually see it very well in my camera. And then I'm taking a Coastal Scents powder brush and I'm just going to blend out all of my um, face just so that all of the contour, like my contour is not too harsh, my blush isn't too harsh. I might just like that translucent setting powder just for that um, purpose. I think it makes, it, it blends everything beautifully. Now I'm going back in with the highlighter again and I'm just going to highlight my brow bone since I forgot to do that earlier. This is the Ciate London highlight.
And now I'm going in with my Bite Beauty um, lip pencil <clears throat> and just kind of outlining the lips. This is in a pinky nude shade. I think it's really pretty. And then I will go over it with the Bite Beauty lipstick that is the same shade. And that's the end of the eye er, of the tutorial. So stay tuned for my thoughts on what I thought of this palette. Thanks. Bye, guys. Mom here. Um, I just did recorded or did a tutorial on the handbook for the recently deceased uh, makeup pa eyeshadow palette. I, I have the eyeshadow on today, obviously, and I wanted to kind of talk about how it performed uh, a little bit. Um, I the colors are beautiful. Got the big mirror here. Colors are quite gorgeous. Um, I only used, um, well I used a few from this palette. I used all the top row. Um, I used these two from the middle row. And I used the Bio Exorcist from the bottom. So I did kind of a green blue look today. Oh, oh, and I also did, I also used the black down here. Um, I feel like these are very powdery. There was a lot of fallout with them. Um, they are very pigmented, um, uh, most of the colors. I feel like the colors I didn't have a problem with. It was the fallout. Um, I also feel like there's only, like, three, yeah, there's only three colors, which is Beetle, Beetlejuice here, um, Dark Room, which is this purple down here. And then the strange and unusual, which is the black, that are matte colors. So there's really no transition color. So I actually did put um, a shimmery transition today because I wanted to stay true to the palette and not use anything else as far as eye sh uh, other eyeshadows. Um, but I do think it did a good job as far as eye look goes. We'll have the cameraman zoom in so he can get a good look. Uh, the eye look... I mean, I think it was okay if he'll stop moving. Um, so, I mean, I did a blue-green, and then I did put some orange above it, so it does have kind of a summery shimmer going on. It's, it's pretty. I like it. Um, it's at Hot Topic, and I spent, uh, I think I spent $14 on it, because I think it was on sale. It's normally $16.90, but I mean, it's kind of fun if you want, let me just throw it on the ground. It's kind of fun if you want um, to have just a fun little look. Um, so, I mean, do I recommend it? If you like lots of fallout, uh, probably not. I, it, okay, on a scale of one to five, five being very user friendly and one being not at all, I would say this is probably a three because of all the fallout and the cleanup that you had to do afterwards. Um, but I do like the colors and I do think it was fun to use for, I mean, I don't usually use greens, but I did use greens today. Um, so thanks guys. Bye.